Welcome to the Middle Room Workshop. Today I'm going to review the A40 laser module by Nigel. Without further ado, let's get into it! For a long time, the A40640 has been the flagship laser module by Nigel. In fact, I remember when it first came out, it used to be if not the first, one of the first dual diode laser module with approximately 10 watt of optical power output. And it used to be a very powerful laser module. Finally, Nege has decided to upgrade their laser module lineup and the E40 is one of them. This is a fixed focus laser module and it's been designed ground up. So it has nothing in common with the previous uh, laser modules by Nege. So not only you get a new aesthetics, which you can see, you also get new driver and new optics. And the optics is actually what set it apart from other laser module, including the A40640. In fact, the module it is claimed to have a 0.06 millimeter square uh, spot size, uh, which is visible in my testing and it allows you to perform very clean and very tight cutting. Now with that said, I need to make a small note here that also the previous generation of a 40640 laser module with adjustable focus was able to uh, go down to the tiny spot size. The problem though is that you were able to achieve that spot size only when you were in engraving mode. So that is with the lens all the way screwed out or in other words in uh, short focus mode. And so with this new laser module you get the tiny uh, spot all the way through the range. So that means both for engraving and cutting which is something cool. Now the module is entirely self-contained and the cool thing about it is that you get um, nozzle which is pre-assembled and you even get the hose which passes through the block so everything is basically uh, enclosed and so you don't get this hose wobbling around either to the front or over to the side the other thing is that the laser module has a longer design and it extends all the way down um, to the bottom so that means that if you are using the laser module uh, without a proper enclosure, I mean if you're using your laser machine without a proper enclosure uh, you get a minimal amount of flashing on your room so it's uh, more comfortable to work with it. Um, however a drawback about the extended um, design and so that is that the, the laser extends all the way down almost touching the sheet is that it leaves no room for any clamping device or magnets and sometimes it is also prone to catch with the material um, if for example the detail is popping out because of the compressed air and so this is uh, I think the major drawback which is in common with other laser module having similar uh, design. A positive thing about the longer design though is that if you're using this laser module with your NG3 Pro and NG3 Max you will be able to engrave sheet, sheets of material placed directly onto the spool board without having to boost them up. So that is to say if you take the uh, previous generation of A40640 you basically had to elevate the working area because the short design wouldn't allow it to go that far down and so if you would have want to go that far down you would have end up out of the clump and so basically you couldn't work with it so you had to basically use your honeycomb and boost it up um, as well in order to be able to work now another feature about this uh, laser module is that you get the dual power supply so that means that the laser module works uh, with both 12 volts and 24 volts power supply um, and that's something that I see it's common with most of the new uh, laser module design uh, from Nege. This makes the laser module very versatile because you can use uh, directly, for example, uh, between the um, Nege 3 Max, which uses 24 volts, and other Nege machine. And also, thanks to the adapting board, which usually comes with uh, uh, the laser module by Nege, you can basically 
install this laser module in any other machine, and I mean in any other brands uh, that you want. All right, let's now talk about the capabilities. Now, uh, as per capabilities, uh, in my opinion, you get similar performance like other 10 watt laser modules. However, I think uh, it is a little bit more effective, especially compared to the A4640, and that is thanks to the, to the tinier spot size, which means thanks to the new optics. Now, as usual, when I get a new machine or a new laser module, I'm running my testing. And so the first test I'm running is the ramp test, which is going to allow me to basically locate the right height for the laser module, or in other words, the clearance from the sheet, uh, so that I can always position my laser module at the right height. And uh, my findings is that for up to three to four millimeter sheets, uh, you can have a clearance of about three millimeters. Uh, which you can easily achieve with a sheet of acrylic or play wood placed beneath for the adjustment. For the engraving, I usually run my engraving template on a um, sheet of birch play wood. This is my personal preference. That's what I normally engrave. And I was able to go all the way up to 4,000 millimeters per minute, 70 to 80% in power. Now, uh, you could go faster if you want, but this is my personal preference. Again, I normally don't go beyond 4,000 millimeters per minute. Cutting, I was able to cut for two and a half millimeter of birch play wood at 320 millimeters per minute, 95% of power. Now here it is worth noticing that you could actually go faster. In fact, I was able to cut through at 400 millimeters per minute, 95% power. However, uh, this will require a little bit of force in order to pop out the components from the sheet, which usually doesn't end up uh, a clean job because often you get ragged edge, which you will then need to uh, clean up. And then uh, if you're working with smaller details or more intricate designs, uh, you might end up breaking your part. So what you want normally is to look for a power that will uh, easily remove your components from the sheets without having to apply any force whatsoever. So similarly, I tested the 3.2 mm or 1 8 of an inch birch play wood, which cuts cleanly at 220 millimeters per minute, 95% power. And again, I was able to go all the way up to 300 millimeters per minute, but it wouldn't be a perfectly clean job. 3 millimeter MDF, two passes, 450 millimeters per minute, 95%. Then 3.2 millimeter acrylic, two passes, 300 millimeters per minute, 90%. 1.5 millimeter of ABS in a single pass at 750 millimeters per minute, 95%. And finally, metal engraving. Now, if you're wondering why I stopped my testing at 90 to 90% in power, that is because 100% uh, is never a good idea. In general, with any machine, especially with uh, optics, with the laser diode, because that is very detrimental. And if you want to increase the longevity of your laser module, I do recommend keeping it down below 90% in power. Now, I normally work between 90 and 95% uh, power. Um, however, when I tackle on some longer project, which goes beyond uh, the 30 minutes operation, I rather lower down both the power and the speed so that I can uh, preserve uh, my laser module. All right, let me now tell you what I like, what I don't like, and what I think it should be improved. But before that, let me just give you some consideration about the price. Now, I found the price to be in line with other 10 watt laser module, uh, sometimes also cheaper. However, considering what you get in the package, I think that it has a very good value for the money. Between the pros, um, you have a built-in air assist uh, with a self-contained hose and everything is ready. Out of the box, you can basically plug in and go. Then you get the adapting board, which will allow you to use the laser module with any machine you like, and that is with any brand. And I found the laser to be more effective than other 10 watt laser module, especially the previous generation of a 4064 zero. Something to improve, Nege should definitely include the clearance plate for the laser module. 
that is something that other brands are doing for a very long time and it is finally time uh, that Nejet does it as well. So um, with other laser module you normally get a reference plate that you can place under your laser module so you can you can easily adjust the height as needed and here instead you don't get that. Now something that I don't like and this is common with other laser module is when they extend all the way down because as I said it leaves you with absolutely no space for clamping to put magnets and the other thing is that because you are using hair the compressed hair might pop out some of the smaller components some of the smaller details and they might end up on the way of the laser module which will basically ruin up your project so it is something that you really need to look out for and so I would rather uh, like to see laser modules that extends all the way down but uh, they have a removable shield like for example Ortur or Alfero used to do with some of their uh, laser modules. Should you consider it or discard it? Now with the premise that a 10 watt laser module in my opinion is the best option to start uh, because it's the best compromise for both cutting and engraving meaning that it is not too powerful uh, for engraving and it is not too weak for cutting and also comparing its effectiveness with other 10 watt laser module especially with the A4640 if you're looking also into that I would definitely throw it in my shopping cart with that said I hope you found my video informative if you liked it click the thumb up button below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you want to see more video like this one ciao for now